Hello, and welcome to Interact Story Theater's Wheaton Family Theater Series, Saturday mornings in April. Hi, I'm Allie Oliver Kruger from Interact Story Theater, and I'm so glad that you could be here to join us. We're going to kick off our series with Puppets with Penny. And before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping. We invite you to participate along with Miss Penny right from where you are. Please feel free to ask questions and respond in the comments. And finally, this program is being recorded, but we ask no recording screenshots or photos of your own. And we hope that you really enjoy the program. At this point, I'd love to invite Penny Russell to our virtual stage puppeteer extraordinaire. Hello, Penny. Hi. Hello, good morning. I'm so excited you're here. I love puppets. I brought some puppets and stuffed animals with me so I could practice and learn how to puppet just about anything. Um, and I'm just so thrilled that you're here. I am very excited about this Interact series and I'm very excited to get started talking about puppets today. Excellent. Well, let me go ahead and turn off my camera and you can take it away. Bye. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, or evening, wherever you are when you are listening and watching this program. This is Puppets with Penny. My name is Penny. I am a puppeteer. I travel around putting on puppet shows for people just like you. And today I wanted to share a little bit of information about four styles of puppetry. Oh, hello, everyone. My name is Pearl. I am an actress. Excuse me, Pearl. Don't pay any attention to this person right here. I would like to share with you, Pearl. Don't pay any attention to this person right here. Pearl, you're being very rude. Sorry. I was just about to tell him what we're going to do today. But I want you to know that I am an actress. I'm very, very famous and I'm a dog, but I do not bite. I have no teeth. And I, I, well, I'm a puppet. And you can see my ring light in my glasses. Ooh, it's very trippy, but I have a special light because I'm famous. Pearl, can I get back to it? And we'll get back to you. All right, all right, Pearl. Just have a seat over there. Where? On the chair. Is it clean? Yes, it's clean. All right, I will be back. All right, Pearl. Today we're going to talk about four styles of puppets. There are more puppets than that, but that's what we're going to introduce today. First, I want to share with you that anything can be a puppet. This is my definition of a puppet. Anything inanimate that you animate. Anything that's not alive and you pretend it's alive, to me, that's a puppet. So it might be a stuffed animal that you pretend can walk and wave and talk. I think the most important thing is that your puppet make eye contact and that your puppet can breathe. It might be a stuffed animal. I'm gonna put you right back there, stuffed animal. It might be a toy, but if I give it a little bit of personality, hello, and I make eye contact and I let that puppet breathe. I can pretend it's alive and I call that a puppet. It doesn't even have to be a toy or a stuffed animal. It could be an object. Hello, hello. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you're here today. And uh, I'm gonna watch from over here. It can be anything, anything that is not alive. You pretend it's alive to me, that's a puppet. We're going to start today with our first puppet style. It's a very simple, basic puppet style called a finger puppet. You can pretend your finger is alive and its own little creature. And you can look at the audience and you can talk. Hello. And you can walk. Finger puppets work really well for a small audience and Finger puppets work really well virtually. They can fill up the screen and they can be very small. Ooh. So 
They can do all kinds of things. If you are working with your friends on a screen, you can use that screen and your finger puppets can climb around, can explore that space, can find a hole and climb into it. Again, we're thinking about eye contact. There's your eyes. You have to find the eyes of your character before you can make eye contact. Another really simple way of making your own finger puppets is you can just draw a picture on a piece of paper. So I drew a little chick for spring and then I taped that piece of paper to a paper tube that I wrapped around my finger. Paper tube, paper puppet, and I have a finger puppet that can fill my screen. Cheep, 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 cheep. That can walk around. That can go find its mama. It can be a tiny, tiny chick. It can fill the screen. Another way one of my teacher friends taught me to make a finger puppet at home is to cut out maybe a character from a cereal box or I cut this character out of some tea that I bought at the store. And then I have a beautiful tiger. It's just a piece of food packaging wrapped around a tube on my finger. But I can make that tiger come closer and closer and closer. And I can tell a story and pretend that we are in India. So another way you can make a simple finger puppet. I also made finger puppets by using an old glove and cutting the fingers off. And then I gave it some eyes so I can make eye contact. And I pretended this one was a worm scooting along. I wanna show you one more finger puppet because I was very proud of these. I used some fabric. I used something called felt. And I did the same thing I just showed you. I have a two-dimensional head and a tube for my finger. And then I've got some savanna animals. So I could tell a story pretending we're in Africa on a savanna, taking pictures of all the animals we find. Or maybe I could make these animals talk and tell us what it's like to live where it's nice and warm. Oh, it's really lovely. Oh, I really remember everything about my entire life. I just used a marker to make some details on my finger puppets. I think you could do that too. And you could tell a story from anywhere in the world. Finger puppets is our first puppet today. If you move your finger like this, you might remember that we talked about finger puppets. Next, we're going to use our whole hand and play with some hand puppets. There's lots of different kinds of hand puppets, but the kind I want to share with you today is a moving mouth hand puppet. So we're going to start like this. We are going to open and close our hands. Open, close. Open, close. Open, close. Now we're gonna open and close our fingers. Open, close. Open, close. Open, close. Now keep your fingers close together and open and close with your thumbs. Open, close. Open, close. Open, close. You've got a hand puppet now that can make eye contact. I'm pretending it has eyes right there. And it can talk. Hello? Hello? Uh, I'm a hand puppet, and uh, I have kind of a high, silly voice. That's true. Yeah. I'm going to look over here. I'm going to look over here. I'm going to look up, look down, look all around. I want to introduce you to one of my favorite hand puppets. My friend Judy found this for me at a thrift store. Are you ready to come up? Don't be frightened. It looks maybe a little scary, but it is a puppet. I control it and it is very kind. Oh, hello, my name is Dino. I have a very deep voice and um, she is, you? Yes, is, uh, is, she's moving my mouth. How, like this? Oh, like that? That's how she's doing it and um, hello. Hi. How are you? 
fine. Wow, that was pretty awesome. I am a dinosaur, and I'm very friendly, but sometimes kids are scared of me, and that's okay, but sometimes when people get to know me, they feed me. Mm, mm, mm. I love it. So again, we're making eye contact with you, the audience. We're letting that puppet breathe and giving that puppet a personality. This is a moving mouth. Hand puppet. Yeah, she's got her hand inside and my mouth moves. That's how you remember. Okay, bye. Bye, Dino. Thanks for coming. That was Dino, our moving mouth hand puppet. We have talked about finger puppets and moving mouth hand puppets. Next, I want to talk about a kind of puppet that is pretty easy to use. Well, I don't see it much in schools, but it's a pretty fun kind of puppet to use and a puppet I think you could make. I call it a rod puppet or a stick puppet because it has a stick for its body and sometimes sticks on its arms. Let me pick this one up for you. Oh my goodness. She's been through a lot. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lisa, and uh, I am happy that I got to come visit with you today. Um, let's see. I am made out of a stick. It, it was actually a piece of bamboo. Well, it's still bamboo, but, um, but now it's a part of a puppet. And let's see. I have a lot of fabric. Um, it's just a recycled actually and just glued on and it and it turned into this pretty um beautiful beautiful dress but it was left over from another project and um so were these beads sometimes um well i used to wear a scarf but then then i got some hair and it's uh, made out of yarn uh, i've got some googly eyes that uh, shake a little when i talk and I have a hand down here somewhere. Now, let me see if I can find my, my hand. It's on a stick, so it should be easy to find. Oh, here it is. Okay, okay. Oh, it's stuck. Uh, hello! <laughs> I have a hand. It's on a little stick, so um, I can wave and I can touch my face or fix my hair. And, oh, my hand was made out of a glove. So, um, sometimes... I could just use um, the puppeteer's hand in the glove. Okay, okay. Uh, you can put your hand in a glove and move it, or you can use your hand as my hand, and I can fix my hair with my hand. So I am a rod puppet. Oh, the most important thing. You might be able to build me at home. You have a stick, and... um. Guess what my face is made out of? Do you recognize it? Hold on, I'll, I'll go get it and show you. It used to be orange juice. <laughs> Look, it's a, it's a, it's an orange juice container, and we cut the top off, yeah, and taped it to a stick, and that became my nose. Yeah, and then, um, oh, the top that we cut off became my shoulders. You can show them. Okay. Her shoulders are underneath this puppet. And that was part of the bottle, too. So you could make a puppet like this at your home. I just used the extra fabric I had lying around. Um, and you could might use some shirt that doesn't fit you anymore. I had some yarn. I put an old stocking on her face or some tights to give her some skin. And... That's about it, yeah? Old gloves for hands? Yeah, you can do whatever you want um, with a rod puppet. And um, and I'm really uh, impressive looking. Yes, I, I think you are. I'm very impressed because I have to tell you something about Penny the Puppeteer. I'm not really a puppet builder. I'm not a visual artist. But these are things, if I can do them, I know everyone out there can do them too. Yeah, 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 she, she's pretty good. Okay, uh, nice to see you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say goodbye now. Goodbye, Lisa. Okay, so we talked about finger puppets. And we briefly talked about moving mouth hand puppets. We need a motion for our rod puppets. 
maybe we'll hold sticks like this. So this, like we're holding two sticks, is our rod puppet. And you could build a rod puppet too with a stick, with a milk jug, or even with a ball and a pencil. You can stick that pencil into a ball and that can become your puppet that can walk or fly or talk. Hello! Uh, anyone have any eyes around here? You can use a marker to give your puppet some eyes. There we go. Ooh, I like it, I like it. Oh, I'll give you a mouth too. You could build a rod puppet. We have one more puppet. I said there were four puppets today. So we're down to the end of our time. Finger puppets, moving mouth puppets, rod puppets. Our last puppet is one that can be very frustrating to use. So I have to tell you, I don't always use this puppet a lot with young people because it can be so frustrating. But if you have some patience, you can take a deep breath, just like the puppets. Then I think we can do it. Okay, I want to show you my first marionette or string puppet. Here we go. Now, marionettes are puppets on strings. And they can be very frustrating. They get tangled. I love untangling them, but not everyone does. The first thing you do when you get a string puppet or marionette is pick up each string to see what it does. I've got this one. Oh, there's that one. What happens if I pick up the top string? Woo! Stands up. So if I lower the puppet, and then I can pick up the top string. <gasps> hands go down, hands up, hands down. So I figured out a lot of little tricks that my marionette can do, and then I can make my marionette dance. I'm gonna shake, shake, shake my roots. Shake, 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 shake my roots. Shake my stem, shake my stem, shake my stem. Shake my stem, shake my stem, shake my stem. I'm gonna shake those leaves all around, shake those leaves all around, shake my plant, shake my plant, I'm gonna shake my plant. Very nice. This puppet does not have a string in the back. So if I want to make this puppet bow, I'm just gonna do a little pinch, ow, I'm just joking, a little pinch in the back so I can lower the controller and let that puppet bow one more time. Very nice. Nice, let's give it up for our flower puppet. Dance, dance all around, dance, dance all around. One more marionette I want to show you before we go. So I am going to move my stage a little bit. You can see that marionettes are a little different than our other puppets. I want to show you a marionette that has four legs and I'm going to do a little bit of a bit different background because my background is black and white and so is my marionette. So then you can see a little better. I pick up one string at a time to see what that puppet can do. And then oh, I can make this puppet stand up. And see what happens when I pull the back string. I can make it lower its head. The other thing I realized, if if I open this string, one thing happens. If I move across and pull the string, something else happens. I can have that marionette lick its paw or open its paw out to the side. I have a controller. If I lower the front of the controller, the puppet puts its head down. If I lower the back of the controller, 
my puppet sits down. So I just discovered so many tricks that my marionette can do. Woo! All right. Marionettes, string puppets, again, pretty tricky, but what you can do to make your own marionette is to find a scarf, something flowy, or a stuffed animal that's pretty floppy. And if you've got a floppy stuffed animal, I could sew a string right into that head, and I could sew some strings on the arms and legs like that flower. Or if you have a four-legged puppet, you can use strings like that cat and you can make your puppet move. Just a little bit of introduction into the, all the ways that you can play with puppets in your homes, at your schools, wherever you're watching from. So we're gonna make eye contact and we're gonna breathe. And then you can have a lot of fun with your puppets. I want to end today by showing you some of my favorite puppet books. There are so many books. The best place to go is to the library. Tell the librarian I'm looking for books about puppetry and you will find all you need. A show of hands using puppetry with young children by my friend Ingrid Crapo. A wonderful book for parents, for teachers with lots of patterns and lots of ideas of using puppetry with the youngest children. Ashley Bryant's Puppets. He makes puppets out of everything. An amazing artist. You would love to look at those puppets. The most excellent book of how to be a puppeteer is one of my favorite books. There are so many puppet designs in that book made of things you probably already have at your own home. And there's some puppets in there that we didn't have time to play with today. So I think you'd really love it. Three more books full of things you can do if you just go to the store and get a couple items that you could find anywhere. The Muppets Make Puppets by Cheryl Henson and the um, Muppet Workshop and then Puppet Mania, Puppet Planet by John Kennedy. So many, you can look at those pictures and see cool ideas of really fine looking puppets you can make with things you could buy at any store and pretty kid friendly too. So there are things that you could do. So thank you so much for having time with us today. I'm going to hand it back over to Allie to tell you about what's coming next. Oh, Penny Russell, thank you so much. I had such a great time. And I hope those of you watching that you had a good time too. I learned so much and I love puppets. So thank you for being here today, Penny. Now coming up next, in our Saturday Mornings with April series, we have Erica Washington teaching us some Ghanaian dances for children. That's on next Saturday, April 10 at 11 a.m. right here where you watch this. And coming up later this month, we have Song Building with Nancy Krebs, who's one of the original founding members of Interact Story Theater, and a delightful program of Latin American folk tales with Marianne Licha. I hope that you'll be able to join us for these amazing experiences. And thank you for joining us today. Goodbye.